trying to try to find out what you are by what you're not. That doesn't work, obviously. It's a good way to do it, I think. Yeah. By seeing what you're, what you're not, not, you'll find yeah. out what you are. Yeah, so if anyone, if we can hold any questions and stuff, you can agree or disagree, but do it silently, hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, till the question area, because it's just like a riff. It's like a souffle. You don't want to open the oven door too early. There's a, there's a rhyme and reason in it all. You know, I've watched it myself over the years. Yeah. So, and it works. You know, the people who put it, put a little attention on this message tend to start traveling lighter in a stabilized manner. Yeah. So. It's tough, tough to get across in a way because you can't describe what you are. Impossible. Yeah? And even if you could describe what you are, it would be heard by what you're not. So it would neuter it again. Yes? See, this is the dilemma. The lion doesn't need to know it's a lion because it's being a lion. It needs to know it's not a sheep. Once it realizes it's not a sheep, there is no process into becoming a lion. It is a lion. Yeah? If there's any process, it's about learning what it's not. See, you can learn about what you're not. You can study about what you're not. Uh, the great Zen master Dojin said, to study Buddhism is to study the self, and to study the self is to forget the self. Yeah? That idea of being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. Because the only way you're constantly engaged in remembering it is you believe it's about you, really. If you saw it as other, you'd lose interest in it. And the losing interest in that is the interest in what you are. Yeah. It doesn't look like interest because it's not moving anywhere. Because you're always everywhere at all times. So this it's not being directed. It's undirected interest and attention. So it's hovering almost like a cloud. And to me, that's the presence that you can you call a presence. It's actually un undirected interest and attention just there because it's not going anywhere because the goal has been met and it is that goal it's not being sent on any spiritual chores it's just resting yeah or they call it like the abidance of truth yeah. it's abiding in the space instead of being shot out through the space into what's not happening all day and you know attending to thoughts about you somewhere else at some other time which is all self -in. it's all obsession itself yeah and if the obsession with self, if the selfing studies two years about the obsession with self, that's obsession with self. Yes? And like we say in recovery, you have to quit playing God. But if that which is playing God tries to play, playing God, what is that but playing God? So you can never get out of it, yes? If you believe you're in it, you can't get out of it, ever, ever. Yeah. But you realize you've never been in it, and that's being out of it. If that which is playing God, here's the message. You've got to quit playing God. So then now that which is playing God tries to quit playing God, that would be playing God. Yeah? Ad infinitum. Yes? So that which is playing God cannot quit playing God. <laughs> it has to be seen, you know? It has to be seen that you're not that which is playing God. God doesn't, what well, it's just a term, but God doesn't need to play God. It is God, yeah? We don't have to, you are aware, you don't have to do awareness. Yeah? You are aware. That's our nature. Yeah? To be something is no thought and effort involved in it. It's when you think you're something else, then we believe that we can do and have ourselves into a state. But you cannot do and have yourself into a state of being. You're never out of a state of being. That's it, you know? So this whole idea of trying to get into the moment is predicated on an insane idea you could be out of a moment. All those people, all those books that sold real well, you know, how to get out of the moment. You know? Did anyone read the whole book? Usually, I mean, how to get into the moment, very rarely. But they always buy the next one, how to really get into the moment. And then they buy the, you know, the superior edition, how to really, really get into the moment. But it's all predicated on an insane idea you could be out of a moment. You've never been out of any moment you've ever been in, ever. Yeah? This is impossible. Yeah? You're it. If you're not here, nothing could be observed. 
there would be no observing going on with you without you. You're the light. Yeah. So this message, I did. I humbly ran into it. I wasn't a great spiritual seeker, you know. I mean, I remember I talked in Boston once, and they, a guy had been at this this event, and they had people standing for 17 minutes, and then there would be a, a big awakening. But he gave up at 16 minutes, and he asked me, what should I have done? I said, you should have done it for 18 minutes, yeah? And that's how it goes, more, you know, just keep more and more. It's not going to happen through more. It's already so. The only thing that makes us interested in it happening is that we believe we'll be there to enjoy it happening. Like there's an old, did I use that last night, that Ramesh Balsakar joke? Did I? I the million that. dollar one? No, I didn't. No, did I? Oh, it's a really nice joke. He, he was at a <laughs> spiritual group and he said, all right, what would you rather have, a million dollars or enlightenment? So they all raised a hand for enlightenment. He says, no, no, I'd go for the million dollars because at least I'll be there to enjoy it. <laughs> That's the whole point. People want to be there to experience their own absence. It's not available. It's not available. It isn't. You're never going to be there to get it. You're never going to get it. Literally, that's, the, that's when the news really hits, is when it breaks that incredible stubborn idea you're going to get something that you are. You cannot get what you are. You get everything else from there, but you can't get that. Yeah? You can know everything else from what's knowing, but you cannot know the knowing. You can see everything else, but you can't see the seeing. Yeah? You can hear everything else, but you can hear what's hearing. Science will study everything, but they can't study that which is studying. Because the act of studying would be that happening. You cannot get prior to what you are. You cannot get prior to what you are to know it. It's impossible. You are, the only possibility we have available is to be it. That's it. Yeah. And you can't seem to get there, but you can seem to realize there's no need to get there if you see what you're not. If you see that there's a reference that everything is started from and everything seems to be brought back to, that's false. It's not true. Yeah. And in seeing what you're not, that's the seeing of what you are. It's the seeing of what you're not. That's what you are. The only way you can even get an intimation of what you are as the, is the activity of being it, which is seeing, awareness. You're, you're aware, incessantly, all the time, no time, all time, nowhere, everywhere, that's what it is. There's no one moment when there's a crack or an interruption or a hiccup in being. That's why you can't see it, because it's always, always, always available hasn't gone anywhere, you're not closer to it, you're not farther away from it, none of that's happened. And when, you, and when it becomes obvious, the appropriate response is arresting that. Yeah, you've got enough attention to deal with today, but you'd ne you will never have enough attention to deal with yesterday and tomorrow. You never will. And in what's not happening, so much shit can be happening. You can have cancer three weeks from now while you're perfectly healthy. You could have a total destruction of your whole life while you're fine on vacation. Yeah. Most people I run into, they are not responding to what's happening. They're reacting to what's not happening. Yeah. They're driven crazy by something that's not even here. It can only be brought about by thinking about it. And the mental state thinks quite a lot about you somewhere else at some other time. That's what it does. That's how it pictures you now. It has to be remembered. You cannot, you don't have your own light. You're not producing any light, this idea of self. It has to be remembered. Yeah. And the thought system, follow it. Check what's going on in your head. The thought system is drenched in time. It's always about yesterday and tomorrow, and it's always about you. And you, in its view, is, are pictured as a body. That's it. That's the only way you could be thought about. You cannot think about yourself as spirit. It's impossible. There's no qualities you can get. You can't, there's no handle that you can get your hand around. Yeah. You're always thought about as a body. 
This is what doesn't get noticed. So when we sing the beautiful praises of what is, we're hearing it in most cases from what we're not. That's how it get. That's how the lion can go 50 years and never get that it's a lion. And it may be living 50 years of trying to become like a lion and it will go on for on and on and on because it is a lion already. How can it become what it already is? It's impossible. It would have to be what it ain't to become like a lion. And it's a lion. And you are awake, period. Yeah. You can seem to be awake to that or you can seem to be asleep to it. But it doesn't change the fact. What's initiating your day is no thought and effort. You're seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, and touching. And you're not going to an advanced school of touching. You know, you're not practicing seeing. If your ears are okay, you're hearing everything. There's no volition in it. There's no discrimination. You can swear, I'm not going to see that bird. And if your eyes are looking out there and it flies by, you saw it. Yep. The confusion we have most of the time is because this mental state presents us after the fact, but implies we're before everything, you believe that the thoughts should be listening to you because you're the thinker of them. And yet, it's very confusing because they don't seem to listen to you at all. When you have a big day and you say, please, can you just stop at 11 o'clock tonight? You can start up at 8, just give me 9 hours, please. It's a very important day tomorrow. But what happens? You're up all freak at night. The thoughts are going off. And it's very frustrating because being the proprietor, you have an assumption they should follow you. Yeah, You should have some say, but you don't because you are not. The idea of being a thinker is a thought. It's a thought that claims to all the other thoughts. That's all it does. It's just all what the mental process does. The mental process, humbly, is in the act of being identified as a self. And the idea of a self is a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. And that independence and separateness gives it a sense of being the owner or the proprietor or, or the doer or the haver of things it has nothing to do with all freaking day. Yeah? And it drives us crazy because what we think we believe we're before doesn't seem to listen to us. What comes after doesn't seem to behave. Yeah? And it's going to keep frustrating you because you've got the horse behind the cart. You don't see what's happening. There is no thinker, there's thinking. Yeah, there is no feeler, there's feeling. There is no haver, there's having. There is no doer, there's doing. Simple as that. Yeah. Seeing what you're not will be exactly what you are. You're the seeing of what you're not. You're never going to see what you are, but you can get a little bumper shot by seeing what you're not. Yeah. It's, ha I can, it's, it's a solid little message. I've entertained it. Yeah, and it's produced effects here. And the effects, see, in what's true, there's no need for truth. It's here where it can seem to be forgotten that truth has a lot of value. Yeah, it will allow this event to travel later. And after a period of time of doing that, you end up to what more do you want, really? You're just naming it enlightenment or awakening, but really, if you had an ease and comfort in the situation you're in right now, and you were satisfied and content, that would be way more than enough. You wouldn't be looking for anything else. You'd be, be of service, basically. You'd be the space that's being held. Because the, you, would have a, you have reached, the much better word than enlightenment and awakening is enough. Enough is a fucking great word. Here. Yeah? When you reach enough, there's an incredible space there. Yes? Incredible space. You get to be of use. Yeah? You are not the import, most important thing anymore. Yeah, just you see how everything's being used. You see the choreography of this place. You see. You see the the signature of that which is everywhere. Yeah. You get eyes to see, like Jesus says. You know, for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, you have those eyes and ears. You do. They're available, but they're not available through K Paul. If you're de dedicated and having, f if you're firm in faith to that system of Paul, all the thoughts and everything, you are going to take yourself to be something you're not. And then you'll be looking for everything from there. Yeah. It's like getting a lot of maps to Los Angeles. They're perfect maps for Los Angeles, 
but really the value of the map is based on knowing where you're starting from. Yeah. If you're thinking you're in Omaha and you're in Florida, the map from Florida to LA isn't going to freaking work, is it? We're just mistaking our position. We take ourselves to be something that we're not. And then what we are has to be seemingly forgotten. Yeah? We did it last night with the necklace, the necklace that never goes anywhere. And yet the lady believed her life was terrible when she thought she lost the necklace. And yet she felt so great when she found the necklace. But it was really never lost to be found. Yeah? So what was happening? She felt sincerely bummed out when she thought she lost it, but she didn't lose it. And then she felt incredible joy when she found it, but she didn't find it. It had never gone anywhere. Isn't that quite suspicious? You know what I mean? You can really see that there's a dreaming going on here. And part of the dream is to forget what we are so that we can look for it. Because then we could be there to get it. <laughs> you can be there as what you're not to get what you are. But we made a mistake. It's not on offer. <laughs> so all you get is what you're not. <laughs> and what you're not does not know enough it doesn't it's addicted it's an addictive nature yeah it's just like all addictions to me stem from the initial addiction of the mental state's addiction to being a self that's the drive and then you you're driven to get relief from that which ends up drugs and everything else like that because you're really trying to get out of self but as we say in recovery self can't get out of self it's such a beautiful lock because of course you want to get out of that which you're not but you take it to be what you are so self tries to get out of self that's why it never works that's why you can never escape an imaginary place You can't get out what you're not in. You can't. It's impossible. You'd have to be in it. Like when I go to New Jersey, I have a little skit. As soon as I get to New Jersey in America, I want to get out of New Jersey. <laughs> it's just like, I just, but I have to be in New Jersey to want to get out of New Jersey. You see, if I'm not in New Jersey, the whole skit's gone because I can't, why, why would I want to get out of New Jersey when I'm out of New Jersey? Yeah, this is the message. It's like, when I were, one time I was in a, I went around the world trip and I stopped in Turkey, in Istanbul. And when he got to Istanbul, uh, I wanted to go to Sofia and the Blue Mosque. And so I gathered with a couple other people and then some guy, very well dressed guy in a, like a shark skin suit with grayish black hair, decided, he said, hey, I'll show you the sights, you know, for free. So he walked us around, it was very nice. And then he took us to this big brick building, knocked on a door, and a guy answered, looked very similar to him, but he like passed us off like a baton. Never saw this guy again. He split. And then they brought us into a rug emporium where they sell <laughs> Turkish rugs. And they say, oh, what's your name? Paul. I go, Paul, Mr. Paul, do you want some Turkish coffee or apple juice? I go, oh, let's have some apple juice. They bring us in there. And then all these other guys with suits start coming in, twirling these rugs, and they're fucking beautiful. They're throwing them down, the light's catching them. It's like, a, and you can stay there for hours, and they'll just keep showing these rugs, and you're drinking tons of apple juice, and I'm sitting there, and, uh, but the thing is, I'm flawless. I don't have a flaw. I'm, I'm traveling around the world. I don't have a house. I don't have a flaw. <laughs> so no matter how great the advertisement is, I don't, I'm not going to buy a rug. Because you don't need, where can I put it? I have to have a flaw to be interested in a rug. So they're going off, and I go, I have total immunity to this incredible advertisement. You know? And they go, well, Mr. Paul, I say, hey, I don't have a flaw. He says, well, we'll... We'll put it in your knapsack. I go, Give me a break. I'm going to go to Thailand with a Turkish rug. Come on. You know, so I had immunity completely. This is the point. The self, the sense of being a self is what is the Petri dish for all the other shit. All the bondage is of self. All the agitation is of self. It's all self is the Petri dish. All this stuff grows out of. If you remove the self, things change. If you see you are not a flaw, you're not going to buy rugs. Yes? You'll have an immunity to the advertising. You will not be t 
taken into yesterday and tomorrow because you'll be obviously awake to what's happening now. And I'll tell you, in what's not happening, anything can happen. Yeah, but it doesn't have one quality what's happening has, which is it's happening. You may not like it, but I'll tell you, this skin can override all the imaginations of what's not happening. Just being right aware here will override all the other stuff. You'll have immunity to it. Yeah? Your attention and interest will not be so dispersed where you feel like you're displaced and you'll be awake to being awake. In other words, your interest and attention will be interested and attentive to the present awakeness. Yeah? It will not go on those chores to fucking find what it's already in. Yeah? You'll start resting, or it's just like the abidance in the truth is exactly the same as being obsessed with self. It's the same energy. It's just where it's been put into. Yeah? We all have tons of faith. It's a force of mind. But the faith is going to manifest here by the vehicle it's put in. Most of us have seen the manifestations, faith in thoughts. We've seen what happens, yeah? What's not happening becomes more dominant than what's happening. We're not responding to life anymore. We, we're reacting to what's not happening, which is an interpretation. Yeah? We, all we get in menus, we never get a freaking meal. It's like having the perfect breast, breakfast nook. You have every box of cereal that's ever been made all around the world, but they're all empty. So you look like you got it going on, but it's totally fucking empty. Yeah? This is what happened. This is what's happened when there's a switcheroo from life is happening to life is happening to me. Life is happening to me is pure interpretation. Pure interpretation. So, like this right there, that's it. That pause, that's it. All our original faces have been shown, as they say in Zen, it, which is not a face. Yeah? This sense right now is it. This is the oddness, the incessant oddness that has never been touched by anything that's happened in it. Yeah? It's pristinely empty and therefore has anything that seems to appear in it leaves no effect on it. That is reliable. That's where you can rest. It's like, let's say you take a, I don't know if you had brownie cameras here. You know, cheap, we had cheap cameras in America. Basically, they had plastic lenses. And when you pointed, it was just speculation. You couldn't see anything. You just hoped that a picture was taken with something in there. And they were like 20 bucks, yeah? All right, so let's say there's this Browning camera. And then we are this huge, unbelievable camera with incredible lenses and 360 degrees see around. And we're walking around, and we walk, and we see this Browning camera, and we look through the Browning camera. And as we're looking through the brownie camera, that act of looking through it pr produces a sense of losing the sense of being the big camera and now suddenly being identified as the brownie camera. Yeah. So now, though the big camera is still the big camera, it hasn't lost any qualities, any lenses, but now it's looking, all of that is looking through a very small lens. And that's how it's seeing everything. It's, its ability is much larger, but this is how it's going, yeah? So now it's seeing it, and it has an irritability, restless, and discontent because it's not a brownie camera, yeah? This doesn't really fit it. It doesn't seem to be communicating to it clearly, but it doesn't have any other possibility because it's a, it thinks it's a brownie camera, all right? What happens? So it's looking in there. What happens? Do does for it to realize it's, a, it's, a, it's the bigger camera, does it have to kill the brownie camera? Does it have to stop looking through the brownie camera? No, but it has to see that it's not the brownie camera. If it, it doesn't see it, it can move away and it would take absolutely no time. There would be no big force oh, pulling the big camera out of the brownie because it's not in the brownie camera. It never was in the brownie camera. It was just, it mistook itself by moving through the brownie camera as the brownie camera. Therefore, it can be easily corrected because it never happened. It's never been the brownie camera. It just thought it was the brownie camera. And it can only think it's the brownie camera in time. In timelessness, it's never, ever been the brownie camera. Nor will it ever be the brownie camera in no time. 
Yeah, that's what happens. And you can keep looking through the brownie camera, but you're not the brownie camera anymore. Yes? And suddenly, all the opinions you had about, fuck, I wish I wasn't a brownie camera, you, there's suddenly an acceptance comes around being the brownie camera because you're not the brownie camera. For me, this, if I was taken to be this, it was an urban renewal project fucking forever. I would always find something, I should do something. It was unbelievable. It's like the bud, tons of budget was put into improving Paul or hiding the inability to improve Paul, which is more what I did, more song and dance basically than any renovation. But what would happen if you saw you weren't this? The whole, the budget, there'd be no more budget to it. You'd fucking, okay. You would, you would have suddenly an incredible acceptance for what you are by realizing you're not what this is. That's where the acceptance comes from. How can you accept this, truly? Most of the people that meet you, if you have any intimacy with you, don't accept you <laughs> at all. They, don't, they, they find great fault in you, completely. They would call you deluded if you think you're okay. You know what I mean? And they, could have, they have a lot of evidence that you're not. And they're all their friends agree with them. Yeah? You can't, this isn't going to be anything other than it is. But if you're not that, it can be totally okay. But if it's you, it'll never be fucking okay. You, you may accept everyone else. You're not going to accept you. It's unbearable to think that you're this limited as this which is limited. That is uh, totally cool with, to that that's unlimited. It's totally okay. It's been the greatest break this has ever gotten when that giant mental hen got off it and I could just be a regular, you know. It's like, you know, I'm a three-quarter ton pickup. I'm not supposed to be the whole world. I'm not, I'm not all that there's going to be thought about. You know, I'm not the center of the universe. It's way too much responsibility. I'm not like a utilitil, you know, like utilitarian Toyota. I shouldn't be in front of any parades or nothing like that. Yeah. And if you think, and please do not make the mistake of thinking the messenger is the message. It isn't. Yes? There's no... You are what you're looking for. I am, the highest level I am is a mailman. I'm bringing you the news you already know. You've been served the spiritual subpoena. I do not want you to follow me home. I do not want to read the letter with you. You got it. And I have a lot of faith that it's already so. So I don't believe you need to browbeat it or intensives or retreats. I don't believe more is going to make it better. I really don't. I think I have enough respect for you to know you know, need to know very little. All you need to do is hear a message and then let that message, the message is already going to go in there, yeah? Do, it doesn't need to be thought about. You don't need to water it with thoughts. It's going to grow no matter what. If the message is in there, and then just find out. See if it works for you or not, yeah? If you travel light over a long period of time, then all your drives for enlightenment may be dismissed because really all you want to do is feel an ease and comfort in your day, basically. I believe, yeah? So I wanted to read something, if you don't mind, from the course. There's people, some people are here from the course, right? I hope. Yeah, this is an incredible little paragraph, so if you can follow it, yeah? So it starts like this. Let me see if I can do it right. Yeah. So it goes, yet we have heard, I'll take it slow. You know, the, anyone know the Course of Miracles, yes? A lot of people have heard about it. Yeah, all right. That's why I brought it up. Yet we have heard a very similar description earlier. So what was the description about? It was what about what you're not, really. Yeah? So he's talking about... Yet we have heard a very similar description earlier, but it was not of you. Yeah. So the only thing that can be described is not of you. You cannot be described. But what you're not can be described. Yeah? So... Yet we have heard a very similar description earlier, but it was not of you. But, this, but still this strange idea, which it does accurately describe, you think is you. The idea of being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity, a thing. Yeah? Reason would tell you, and the Course uses the word reason, you could say wisdom, but it says, it uses this terminology quite a lot. Reason would tell you. So reason would tell you that the world you see through eyes that are not yours must make no sense to you. So these eyes are not yours. Yeah. yeah. 
So if these eyes are dictating and telling you what the world is like, yes, they're not telling you what truly is what's going on. They're not directed at the awareness, they're directed at the body. Yeah. So, and you have, uh, you, can, you can indeed believe this, oh, wait a minute. To whom would seeing such as this send back its messages? So this false seeing, to whom will these messages be sent back to? To you or to what you're not? Yeah. Surely not you whose sight is wholly independent of the eyes that look upon the world. So our awareness is not of these eyes, yes? These eyes that look upon the world isn't what's seeing. What's seeing is awareness, yeah? This is a form of looking called self-centeredness. It sees everything as how it pertains to you. That's not the seeing. The seeing is independent of these eyes. The seeing is awareness, yeah? Surely not you whose sight is wholly independent of the eyes that look upon the world. If this is not your vision, what can it show to you? If this is not your vision, what we're hearing, you know, the reports from K. Paul all day, yeah? If this is not your vision, what can it show to you? It can show to you that it's not your vision. Like, what can a failed system show you? It can show you it's failed, yes? That's, the, that's, that's its teaching, yeah? Like, all the failures we've had were brought to bring us to this point where we stop fucking looking. And in the stop, when you stop looking, that's the scene. Yeah? That's what the paths and all the journeys can do. The value is, is that they fail us. Trying to get all the somethings will bring us to you need do nothing. That's their value. They never produce the need do nothing. They only produce more something. But the value is they fail us and then we arrive at I need do nothing. You never arrive at something. You always arrive at right where you always, always are, which is I need do nothing. That's, that's the summation of all the journeys. Is the impossibility and the pointlessness of the journey. That's what it is. It's not the arrival, because that's always put off. It's the fact there's no need for the journey. And some of us only learn that by being on a lot of freaking journeys. <laughs> That's their value. Their failure is what serves. So he goes, If this is not your vision, what can it show to you? The brain cannot interpret what your vision sees. So the brain cannot interpret the seeing. Yeah? This is a beautiful statement. The, this you would... Understand, the brain interprets to the body. This is the whole message of selfing. That's what the brain is doing. It's selfing. It's taking everything in to imply, to reinforce, to assume, to suppose, through this act of being identified as a self, that you're a body. That's how the brain is interpreting everything. It's interpreting everything to the body. The thought system pictures you as a body. The memories hold you as a body. The perceptions verify you're a body by seeing bodies. Yeah? The whole system is self-centered. It's centered on the idea that you're a self. So it says, but what, hold on, I hope I can get this. But what it says you cannot understand. When, if you were a kid and you showed up right now and saw you as an adult and it saw that you were reacting to what's not happening, you as a kid would think you're fucking crazy. <laughs> if you as a kid saw that you were worrying, what's going to happen next week? Because did you ever worry, will I be playing next week when you were playing? <laughs> I never did. Did I ever go home and say, Mom, come in. I think Wayne was playing better than I was. I think Wayne's getting more out of the play. You know, none of that was happening. <laughs> I was never thinking, I need to get into the moment, because I hadn't thought I could be out of a moment. All of those insane ideas had never set up yet. They, we grew into it. Yeah? So, it says, You have not realized it's impossible to understand what fails entirely to reach you. 
So the message of the brain to the body doesn't reach awareness. Awareness doesn't and doesn't understand any of it. It's all it's like a dog. You ever see those things? How a dog listens? Biff, walk. You know, what I mean? the dog doesn't hear most of the shit that you're saying. Only one or two points. So the awareness, it's just giant ticket tape, means absolutely nothing to what we are. It's completely insane. It's a completely insane that what that which is would be looking for itself. <laughs> it totally makes absolutely no sense. So he goes. This is incredible. See, I love this because it's a great description of what went on and the activity. Yeah? And sometimes I get tired of saying it, so I like to read something else that says it. And this was, I don't read the Course as a religious event. Very rarely do I see it, but I, was, I had to speak at a Course in Miracles group, and so I was going through the pages, I found this, and I've been using it for years. You know? <laughs> because I think it's so beautiful. So it goes here. Think then what? This is incredible. Think then, of course think is the word. Think then what happens. Denying what you are. So you don't believe that we're denying what we are. We're thinking we're affirming what we're, we are, but we're not that which we're affirming, which is the denial of what we are. You see? If what we think we are isn't what we are, this act of being affirming this all day is the denial of what we are. And this is incredible. So think then what happens. Denying what you are and firm in faith that you are something else. The sense of being something else cannot be produced any other way than faith. Anxiety produced out of what's not happening is really the spawn of faith. When you have faith in the thought system, it's going to produce anxiety out of what's not happening. It cannot produce anxiety out of what's not happening, but the faith that we are can make it seem to produce anxiety out of what's not happening. We're miracle workers. We just don't realize it. We're making shit out of nothing all fucking day. <laughs> we are. All freaking day, we're making stuff out. We're making next week out of nothing. We're making last week out of nothing. And we're producing effects out of an imaginary field. How can you get a crop from an imaginary field? It's a faith. It's the faith that we have in the mental state. And reason why we have faith in it, because we think it's all about us. If you saw it with Stanley, you would turn it off like that. The, the honey isn't in the pot. You're the honey. We cherish self. We cherish the making of this little imaginary character. And unfortunately, we have to get both sides of the story because it's a dualistic event. You can't, no matter how many times you cut a coin, it's still going to have two sides. You're not going to have it always great if you're around. You're not. So, going to lose it. I may have already. Well, I lost it. There it was. <laughs> The firm in faith, though, is the point, you see? Having, being firm in faith about what you're not, that's the identification of self. That's the selfing. And I'm humbly telling you, it's an activity that you all have a huge role in. It's not happening to you. It isn't. You're dreaming it. You're actively in it. You're actively dreaming right now. There's no escape. There is no point of observation. We're completely enmeshed in dreaming right now. Completely. And one of the dreams is set off by this mental process called the act of being identified as a self. And most of us seem to be involved in that because we believe it's about us. If you could see it as someone else or as, or as a foreign object or installment or a parasitical movement, you could entertain the possibility, I'm not that, and then the next possibility would be, I can be free from it. And that freedom works. Freedom as it and for it and through it will not work. Has it? Has it stabilized? Of course not. Because that which is doesn't need to be stabilized. It's completely stable. Your attempt to stabilize it is what produces a seeming agitation around it. Just let it be. It doesn't need your help, really. 
So by seeing what you're not is what you are. And then you now have downloads that aren't thoughts. You're driven by something other than thoughts. You can experience being led by something other than thoughts. Remember when you were a kid and you'd be running around and just having a great time, naked or whatever? And then they hit a point where everything you've ever done after that was accompanied by thought. Every time you walk in the room, who's watching? You know, it's, oh, it's, it's unbelievable the amount of weight that has been distributed through us to this phony little, like, like pantomime. It's sort of like, you know, if there's one sense, if this world was only one sense, I don't know if I did this time. Did I correct me if I did? Because I don't remember last night now. Mm -hmm. But let's say there's only one sense to experience in this world, and it's feel, right? Touch. That's the only sense that's available. And let's say in that world they have a scripture about heaven, and heaven would be touching thousands of rose petals forever, yeah? You'd just be rolling in rose petals, you know? Softer than any ass's baby's ass, you know? Just rolling in rose petals. And everyone's, you know, read this scripture, and they believe it's a possibility. But it's a world of gloves, yeah? So there's, the hand has a huge glove on it, and it's a crude glove. So everything it touches, no matter how soft it is, it feels rough. It's not the thing that's rough, it's the glove, yeah? And the funny thing is, the glove seems very animated and real, but it's really a non-existent thing. Something is enlivening it, but it's not the glove. But see, the hand doesn't know any better. It's become identified as a glove. So now it goes to heaven, and it feels the rose petals, and they're rough. So the sense feltness of the scripture or the or of the or the realization doesn't translate. It's just intellectual. They believe there's a heaven and it's super soft, but they don't have any they don't have any sense feltness about it. It's dead, it's dry, it's like a religion. But if it only would entertain that it wasn't the glove, the next possibility is it could pull itself out of the glove. And then when it felt the rose petal, the whole impact of the scripture would happen immediately. It would sense the softness. Yeah. It would know before knowing. This is the point. The glove can be taken off. See, if you, if you had a pair of glasses that were driving you crazy, but you assumed they were your eyes, yeah, the only thing you could entertain is, i got to find some glasses to correct these distortions. So you would now go to a lot of optometrists, a lot of spiritual optometrists, and maybe get a new way of looking at life yeah, to correct that distortion. But what would happen if you stopped believing they were your eyes and you just felt around and you realized what you called your eyes were a pair of glasses? What would be the possibility then? You could take them off. You wouldn't have to gouge your eyes out. You would just take the glasses off and you'd have clear seeing because you've always had clear seeing. But we're assuming, we're, assu we're assuming a suit is our skin. So we never entertain the possibility of taking it off. That's how the selfing nudes us. It convinces us that we're, we're it. yeah, And we can't entertain being anything other than it. So now we're, all our dreams of freedom are forced through its little idea of freedom, which includes it. It has to come with you. And that's why you hear a great thing. Oh, the party's going to be so great. Well, but when you get there, it sucks. And then you see it keeps happening. They, every, it's supposed to be great, but when they get there, it seems to suck. Exactly. When you get there, it sucks. So how, how, can, I get, how can I get there without getting there? Yeah? The only way is see you're not that. You have to see you were never in the thing you're trying to get out of. That's, how, that's the state of being out of it. The state of being out of it is brought, to, is brought about by realizing you were never in it. It's never brought about by getting out of it. It's a different logic. The mental landscape is nouns and verbs, but it's all verbing. There are no nouns to be found. That's all made up. You can never have the river. You can jump in and you'll, be, you'll sense the rivering. You'll be moved by it. Yeah.
See, when you, this spiritual subpoena, you're not going to be called to the court of the mental state. You've been convicted there already. Mm -hmm. We're just fucking doing sentences, really, basically. All the parole and probation has been dismissed. You're fucked, basically. <laughs> there are things you believe you did that you can never forgive yourself for. Mm -hmm. If you're the doer of them, you're done, you're done by, yeah? Mm -hmm. There's things you've thought, there's actions that you've done, the feelings... But this spiritual subpoena sends you to the court of light. And in that court of light, all your seeming transgressions are relieved because nothing ever fucking happened to you. As the Course would say, forgiveness cannot be perfect because there's atonement. In atonement, you see nothing ever happened to forgive. Yeah? The freedom is always prior to bondage, not after bondage. It's always prior. It's the inherent state. Any questions then? Yes. It's only been 7.30. I felt like I talked for an eternity. <laughs> Didn't it? Jesus Christ. It's 7.30? It's like 6.45. You started earlier. Yeah. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> so for this thing, life is happening, and I think life is happening to me. Well, I was made redundant a few weeks ago. You what? I was made redundant from my job. You were fired from your job. Well, they call it redundancy. Redundant. Your job was redundant. <laughs> it's just made redundant. Made. Oh, you were made redundant. Yes. Wow. Yeah. How so, did it feel being made redundant? Well, that's, that's, Fuck them. They're redundant. Well, that's, the way I, that's the question for what I felt it was happening to me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but she said life is happening, but I think that... You think that life is happening to you? Exactly. So, see, but I was made redundant. Hold on so one I second. It was I to think me. it would ha see that I think preceded that whole statement. <laughs> you see that? I think that it's happening to you. That's the only way you can see it's happening to you. I think it has to be preceded by thought. The thought makes it seemingly so. That's what gives direction to life, and then it seemed to be happening to you. Life is just happening. Well, are you saying that redundancy is just happening? Yes. It's not happening now. So. The feelings are, there's feelings. You're not going to argue that. All the point is, it's not you having the feelings. It doesn't negate the feelings. You're going to feel grief in this life. You're going to feel sadness. You're not going to get chipped at all. You're going to feel all that stuff. But what's gonna, gonna, not going to happen is the coupling of that activity to the one. Yeah? That one is like a, a car with no engine that's looking to couple with an engine. You're the engine. Yeah? So there's feelings constantly. There's experiences constantly. All of that's going on, but they're not going on to you. That's it. That's the lightness. The lightness is not that you're never going to get re be redundant. The lightness is maybe when you hear that you're redundant, it's not going to have that huge impact anymore because it's not you. Yeah? This isn't about managing feelings. It's just seeing that you're not having any. You're not the one who's having the feeling. It's just feelings being interpreted as having you, basically. So what the, the thought that went with it for me was like, it was unfair and like, oh, how am I going to pay my mortgage and things like that. Yeah. So those thoughts, is it, is that what you mean when you say that I think that life is happening to me? Yes. Rather than... Maybe if I really, <laughs> I have to be careful about what words I use, but a possible, a possible way to have perhaps 
dealt with it would have been it happened and I walk out of the door and I went home and I just looked for another job and not have any of the thoughts that went with it. The worrisome well, thoughts. Well, you never had the thoughts, first of all. They had you. Why not, in, your, in this case, surrender would be better. Just turn your future over to the care of something greater than you, greater than self. Instead of letting self manage it, surrender. Yeah, don't try to use knowledge when you, the, the best tool would be surrender. Yeah, so when it comes to life situations, basically, you know, I love AA for recovery because our main thing is realizing we're not managerial quality, so surrender is very important for the action figure if it has alcoholism or addiction. So, uh, so that principle is very alive for me now. So in matters of situations like getting a job or women leaving you or something like that, maybe it'd be best just to surrender, yeah, and say realize you know, let's say you want a new job to give that importance of getting a new job over to the power greater than self, yeah which is you actually, but usually we have to play a middleman or something, <laughs> and then surrender to that. And then also, when it works out, honor that. So we say, you're in, the, you're in as an action figure, you're being moved from a failed system to a workable system, and it's nice for you to honor it when the new system is working. So now you rely on a higher power, not on the self, and you give what you think you want to manage over to that and see how it does. And I found it works. We say in AA, you know, uh, God, you will find out that God can do for you what you can't do for yourself. So why not just expand the circle of what you can't do for yourself? So you cannot, you cannot handle this situation with losing the job. Just admit you're overwhelmed and see how it works out instead of trying to manage it. Really. I hear so many stories in recovery, people in the world, and they go on for 20 minutes, and after you hear them, you say, yeah, you're fucked completely. <laughs> and they are. And yet there's a possibility of getting out of it. And it's not through their managing, it's through surrendering. They surrender, and they just suit up and show up, and they do the next right thing, and suddenly I've seen so many miracles happen, so many freaking miracles, it's mind-boggling, yeah? So Ramana used to always say that. You can either use, what, self-inquiry, or your mind's a certain way, surrender is the way to go, and thy will be done. So, yeah. See, every, you know the course, right? Level confusions. So let's say that's the situation is your house is on fire, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you need? Do you need to hear that there is no house and there is no fire? No, you need to know where a pail of water is. So surrender is the pail of water. Dogma gets stuck in levels. Mind is flexible. Yeah? It has the ability to speak wherever the other seemingly mind is. There's no other, but you know what I mean? It doesn't play by a dogmatic rule. There is no self, you know? Someone comes up to me, I'm having a talk. There's no one you, there's no you having a hard time. No, there's a hard time having you, basically. It is. So that would be a humble suggestion. But the hard time having me would be the thoughts, would you say? Well, that's how it uses it. Look at okay. it. Okay. See, we have a story in recovery. It's a great story where the person who got, was sober goes back out. And how its whole thing starts with, is, it's a sentence, a thought occurred to me. Everyone's fucking chapters of every one of their stories in a book could be, that could be the first sentence. A thought occurred to me that it was a good idea to shoot that coke, you know. A thought occurred to me, hey, maybe I could rob that pharmacy. A thought occurred, you know, this is how things happen, yeah, usually preceded by a thought. And if they're your thoughts, they're going to have a lot more sway than if you see it as a thought, Yeah. When you own a thought, the thought has the ability to own you. When the thoughts become yours, you'll become theirs. I'm serious. But Paul, why do thoughts seem so personalized? Hmm? Why do thoughts seem so personalized? Like, it's especially my thought. <laughs> it's about me. <laughs> the thoughts aren't personalized, right? You're looking for personalized. The mental state is using the thoughts to imply a person. Lots of people here are having the same thoughts, but they're producing incredibly different 
effects, yeah? Your thoughts can be driving you crazy. If I see them as yours, they don't have the ability to drive me crazy. But the same thoughts, if I held them as mine, could probably drive me crazy. You see it? It's not the thoughts. It's the sense of being you. It's the sense of being the thought about or the thinker. That's where the bonding is. That's where the distribution of meaning is. The meaning is in the my, and what comes after it is the carrier of the meaning. So there's problem, my problem, usually different. Girlfriend, let's say I have a girlfriend, I have a great time with her, then one day she's crowned my girlfriend and I'm up on stalking charges in a few weeks because I think I should know what my girlfriend's doing at all times. Yeah? I didn't think I should know the girlfriend, what she's doing, but my girlfriend I should know. See, the my is, is, is the self thing. That's the footprint of the selfing in your life. Check it out. If you see the heist, it will prevent the heist. You, there's one thing it doesn't have, which is awareness, and you are that. That is the key. If you try to get out of thoughts as thought, you won't. If you try to get out of, as the feeler as feeling, feeling, you won't. But awareness can reveal a whole lot. And what it will distill into is it's, I'm not that. And when it's not you, you'll lose interest in it all. And when you lose interest in it, you gain interest somewhere else. Yeah? The thoughts, it's not the, the thought doesn't have power. It's, power is injected into the thought through the mind. That's how dreaming, we're dreaming this story of being a self. Any other questions? How do you get around identifying as an alcoholic? Isn't that just a thought when it causes cause suffering? <laughs> How do you get around that? Yeah. I don't. I identify as an alcoholic all the time. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not. You're not what? an alcoholic. So why why do you identify? With it? That's what we do in alcoholism. <laughs> <AA>. <laughs> <laughs> When in Rome, do as the Romans do. It doesn't make you a Roman. It doesn't cause any suffering. No, no, no. No, that's my, in my action figure world, that's my way of life. That's my tribe, my community. It's over 29 years. You know, I found uh, what you are will always speak louder than what you say. So that's the point to me. There's a loving presence in AA, and you know you can hold the space like that. Yeah, I don't talk about non-duality unless I'm asked. Yeah, it's, not, it's pointless. So, yeah, I have no problem with it. Calling me myself an alcoholic. A lot of people have called me worse than that. So, <laughs> by me. Yeah, you wear it loosely. I mean, you're not going to change the language, are you? Yeah, where, are you going to take out all the I's and me's, you know? Are you going to have a pure non-duality language? Give me a fucking break. Right? <laughs> you don't even have to say, oh, I'm an alcoholic in meetings, do you? You, can, you don't have yeah. to. You, there's some clever ways you can say, you're, I'm a grateful member of recovery. You know? Yes, there's some ways to say it. I, I saw some slick people, they know how to do that. But I just say, it. Paul, I'm an alcoholic. See, if you're not one, you can say it. Most people who are one don't say it. <laughs> Most people who are really alcoholics are denying they are all day. If you're, <laughs> you know what I mean? Really. It's, when they're denying they're an alcoholic, they're more an alcoholic than ever. When you admit you're an alcoholic, that's the possibility of realizing you're not one. It's funny how it works, but that's how it works, eh? Yeah, yeah. So. I don't have any, I have, it's all inclusive to me. I don't see any problem with any of it all. I love AA. AA is directed as an act, the action figure. The action figure just turns left too much, you know? <laughs> it needs to have a correction. I mean, where I was in life, the managing by the mental state of this life led me to have to be managed by other people. I was supervised, I was institutionalized jails, two years and three months of alcoholic programs. I could not live life on life's terms out here. Couldn't, it was impossible. And I had to 
when I drank, I had magnetic appeal to people in uniform. I got arrested a lot. <laughs> I did. And I've been run over twice in one night. And I've had tons of fucking terrible things happen to this body. Yeah? I mean, I need some major corrections as this. Yeah? It doesn't, what can be changed can be changed. What's changeless? Yeah? It's different. It's, I'm not, I don't take myself to be this. This is like a car. It needs to have a good mechanic doesn't drive well out here. Yeah? I don't see what's the problem with that. That's how I see it. Yeah? So, to me, the topic of non-duality <coughs> is about what we're not. What we are is the illuminating factor. So, AA is illuminated to me by, through me, you know? When I read the big book now, I see things I never saw before. I see it talks about self-examination, but to me, I turn around, it's an examination of self. When you examine self, you'll see that it's not you, yeah? When self is examining itself, that's more of fucking you, yeah? The idea of self, to me, is like a parasitical movement or a foreign installment. It's something that has attached to the original addiction, which is, yeah. you know, loving of self, yeah. and alcoholism is just an amplifier of that. Yeah. So it's more easily recognizable, but it's the same, it's, it's, it can only grow on self. There's got to be a self to have alcoholism, yeah? That's the thing. So, getting relief from alcoholism allowed me to see the real root of the problem, which isn't alcoholism, it's the identification as self. That's the real original addiction, in my view. And that's why other addictions can never satiate us. Yeah? They can never get us out of self because, in fact, we've never been in self. Yeah? So they're all meant to fail us to see the point. And some people get there quicker than others. And hopefully, if they do, they can share with everyone else and maybe sell, save everyone a lot of time and trouble, yeah? And that, to me, is what this message is. You are going to inevitably end up what we're talking about now. You are going to end up at, I need do nothing. It's impossible not to, because you truly need to do nothing, yeah? It may take a lot of time, may take a lot of different avenues, but they're all going to be the same, yeah? You can sense it now, eh? can you, right now? It's very strong, very... The eyes that we are can see space. You can sense something. You can see space, almost, yeah? Like a, like a tactile event. You know, you can... It's, an, it's, a, it's a real sense feltness. It's not like a dry idea of presence as some place. Yeah. You know. And when you're present, you're available. And when you're available, you'll be of service. That's what happens. Yeah. And you will be taken care of. You will get a job. And probably a better job. And if you don't, that will still prove to be the greatest move that ever happened. Because what's actually having this life is the value giver. It can make the worst thing seem to be the best thing. There's no stopping it. Yeah? Mind cannot be thwarted, big M mind. Yeah? It will take what you call the worst, unimportant, no value, and make it the most rich thing you have. There's no stopping it. It has a different intention than what you believe your head has. Yeah? Right now, you're in the act of dreaming yourself out of the dream. That's what's happening. There's nothing to be concerned about because it never fucking happened. You're in good hands. It's probably the best thing that ever happened to you again. Because if someone called me redundant, I would say, fuck you, you're redundant. They've been cool and they made her redundant. Oh, they made her redundant. And they cannot make you redundant. No one can make you redundant. 
<laughs> redundant means losing your job. What? Redundant means just losing your job. Well, fuck them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I had that guts to say that to them at the time. Well, I you just... can go back there. <laughs> You probably feel great. I would. We'll drive you tomorrow. Hey, fuck you. You made me feel so much better about it now. Uh, yeah. Well, you're feeling better now. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Who are they to make anyone redundant? <laughs> But actually, selfing is totally redundant. <laughs> it really is. Any more questions? This is the slowest night I've ever had. It's like, I feel like I've been here for two hours. <laughs> so, you mentioned before about the tone and the way that there was nothing to a tone. I mean, comparison with the 12 steps and um, what is it that you have to do? You have to make amends. You don't have to, it's a suggestion. It's an invitation yeah. to make amends. I remember you talking about a really good analogy about the having a dog yeah. and the neighbours fighting. Can you go through that again? Well, you have a dog and it shits on the neighbor's lawn. Are you going to be embarrassed about it? No, but you're accountable. You'll go over there and clean it up. But it's not your dog. You know, you're not the dog, are you? So this is the whole point about... I don't believe humbly. This goes to the first step. You mind? I'll just go off on it. So the first step of recovery is we admit that we are powerless over alcohol, yeah, and our lives have become unmanageable. So we use the term of powerless in means like you're dancing with a gorilla. You're gonna stop when the gorilla wants to stop. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have really much say in how the dance is going. That's sort of what it implies. So when you're under the drugs and the alcohol, I found in my own experience that I'm apt to do almost anything, which and I did, you know, unless you could physically stop me, I did a lot of stuff. Yeah. Now I. When I came in AA, I got very clearly the idea that it was a disease, that something had taken me over. So there was a lot of relief from all the guilt and shame I had about that behavior while I was under the influence, because I truly realized I would have done almost anything. There was no volition involved in it. Something had taken me over and used me for transportation, basically. It was having a life through this life, yeah? So I didn't... I found a lot of relief and forgiveness there when I admitted I was powerless over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that became dominant. And I remember one night I was with some friends and I had a girlfriend, my first fairy princess in recovery. You know, My feelings had thawed out and I felt like I loved her and stuff. So I wanted to impress her, of course. And me and my friend, and he had a girlfriend, we were driving our, our motorcycles, and we got to his place, and we went upstairs, and this lady went by, an Asian woman with a uh, paint on her pants, right? We noticed her, said hello. We went into his living room, he went downstairs to get something from the bike, he came in and he says, hey, my neighbor wants to talk to you, and I, I was a house painter, so I thought she wanted advice. So she came into the room, and she said, hello, Paul. And I went, uh, and she says, you owe me $500. So I, owed, I, had, st not stole, I had stolen money. I have, I have a story that it wasn't stealing. But was, I had stolen $500 from her. And here I am trying to be impressing of my girlfriend. And basically, she pulled my pants down, really. Basically. But because I had gotten the idea that I, I would have done anything to anybody, unless you could stop me under the influence, I felt no reaction of guilt and shame. I just said, Jesus Christ, I would have done what I did to you to anybody. And it was true. And then every time I sent her a check, which I did pay her, I wrote in, you're only seeing this money because I'm in AA, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and then she started calling me up for advice. <laughs> That's what happened. But the, the major point was it didn't trigger any guilt and shame because I had really got the idea that I was powerless. Yeah, truly powerless. Yeah which freed me and has freed me from a lot of guilt and shame from those past behaviors. Now the amends was the best, was the most effective step I did because the point is, 
you know, it's not it's not what you are we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the action figure, yes? And I had done a lot of things to people in the pursuit of what I wanted. So I made all my amends, yeah? And if the ones I didn't make that were in Europe and stuff, I was willing to make them. And what I was freed from was the preoccupation of time, yes? I had been spending so much time trying to avoid these people that they dominated all the space in me, yeah? And when I just confronted, I'll give you an example. I lived in the city when I was using San Francisco, and I lived in an area called North Beach, and I used to go to this market, Rossi's, with a long, like, trench coat, and I'd steal some flat steaks and two 16-ounce beers and put them in my pants every day for months. Never got caught. And that would be my, my nutrition for the day, and then I'd just go find drugs, you know? Did this for months, and so I get sober, and there's a nice meeting in North Beach on Thursday night. But in San Francisco, parking is premium. It's very difficult to find space. But every Thursday when I drive down to North Beach, I'd never go down the street that Rossi Market went on. Mm -hmm. I'd never be looking for a parking space there. And this went on for months, and I finally decided, you know what, I'm just going to go in and make amends. Yeah. So I went in there with like 55 bucks. I asked, where's the manager? And they say he's upstairs. I go upstairs. And I tell him, hey, I'm in a program recovery. I used to live around here. I used to steal a lot of stuff. Here's 55 bucks. So the guy goes, what? I mean, great. I leave there. And, then, and at that point, I never thought of Rossi's market again. Yeah? Didn't need a security guard to protect. None of it. It was totally dismissed. That was the power of the amends. It didn't free what I am. It freed what I'm not. Yeah? That's the whole point. The program isn't about spirit. It's about a mental condition. It diminishes the mental condition, so the spirit becomes obvious. That's what happens. And the amends is one of the greatest ways, because you have to be here to see the spirit as, spirit as obvious, because the spirit is present tense. It's not past and future. And if you're occupied by the past and future, you're not going to be seeing it. You're not going to be sensing it because you're not seemingly here. So the, the, the amends was a way of getting me freed from the past and allowed to live a day at a time because this is the only place you meet the presence is in presence. And you don't meet it, you are it, but you know what I mean, yes? So that's the point with that, yeah? So Paul, is the powerlessness equal to the thought system? Is, is it the thought system that's making me powerless for example you know when you say admit that you're powerless am i powerless it's not making you it's taking your power and using is that it where the powerlessness comes from because you're addicted to the well the powerlessness comes from because you think you have power when you don't so the way you have power is by admitting you're powerless see when you don't have power and you keep exerting power you're going to experience powerlessness <coughs> you're going to get frustrated because no one's going to fucking do what you want them to do yeah? But it's an admittance of powerlessness, that's when you have power. So you never experience powerlessness when you admit powerlessness. So the action figure, its greatest move is to admit powerlessness, and that allows power to flow in. Yeah? But when you think you're the power, and you're the manager, and you're the controller, basically that's what happens. And then you experience powerlessness all the time. You can't even control your own seeming thoughts, can you? Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't control getting fired. You're powerless in a lot of levels, but there's an if there's a deep admittance of that, then there's power. Yes, yes. It doesn't work the way. What drug addict lives by the principle they have it by giving it away? What cocaine dealer ever lived that way? I have coke by giving away. No. There's other modalities that that statement is incredibly so. Just like in AA, you have it by giving it away. If you're willing to have it, if you're willing to give it away, you'll have it. Yes? That's, it doesn't go with the mental logic. Yeah? It's a language you find out about, really. It's a way of life that you can only find out about. You can't learn it. You have to find out about it. Yeah? And you can't find out about it as a self. You see that you're not, and then you find out about it. Yeah? Life can go a different way. I never, if, I would never go on one of these trips if I thought about it. 
I live in a beautiful place. Who the hell wants to go to New Jersey? You know what I mean? Really. And then fly and come to England. <laughs> if I thought about it, I'd never go do anything. Really. If there was thought, I'd be frozen. Just suit up and show up. Let go of the results and see what happens. And if something's going to demonstrate you're in good hands. Then act like it you are. If you're taken care of, act like you're taken care of. Be brazen about it. The little dog that's masquerading as the big dog will roll over when the big dog shows up. And you're the big dog. You are. You're just playing the little dog role. Yes? I have to get out of thinking you're the little dog because most of most people who talk about having done that seem to have been an act of grace. Exactly, because you can't see, you're not going to get out of the thinking. You're just going to realize you're not the thinker. How do you do that? You don't do it as a how. It's just the case. It's actually the fact. So is it an act of grace? And are we all going to have an act of grace? Well, you're in an act of grace now. But I've heard this message many times before. No, you haven't. You're only <laughs> hearing it now. I think I know that I'm not a self, but clearly it's not my experience. So is there any point for me to come to a meeting like this, for example? Well, you're here, so there is a point. <laughs> if you're here, there's a point. Seriously. Mind doesn't waste a fucking thing. It doesn't. Mind, the big M mind, doesn't waste a thing. If you're here, there's an invitation for you. It might not be through the satsang, but there's an invitation. If you're here, there's value. Wherever or whenever you're anywhere, you're there, there's value. Mind is the greatest recycler. Mind will make the worst thing the best thing. It can, it's... It, everything, it turns into value. Everything. <coughs> yeah? Just allow it. And you can't. Admit you cannot allow it. And then see that you're not that, and there's the allowance of it. Yeah? This is not about stopping thoughts. It's by realizing you're not the thinker. Then you'll lose interest in the thoughts. The thoughts will continue, but you will not follow them. Yeah? You will hear them, but you won't be listening to them. Yes? Yes, it's different, very, very different. Your okay. day will not be directed by thought. You will do things you would never think you would do, ever. Thinking is paralyzation, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Paralysis. Relative, yes. No, paralysis. Paralysis, yes. Is that what you meant? Yes. Paralyzation. Paralyzation. Paralysis. Yeah. I like making up words. Yeah. Paralyzation. That word's redundant. Huh? It's redundant. That's, that's, oh, I'm redundant now. No, the words feel bad. Words redundant. Oh, oh, the words. Yeah. Doesn't feel bad. Who, um, who's yeah. the action figure? I don't. I don't. There isn't any who. <laughs> <laughs> If you didn't see yourself, would you know it was you? If you never saw yourself in reflections, would there any be sense of you? It's got to be remembered. When you were a kid, when you were a baby, there was no sense of you or other for quite a while, while you were here, supposedly. Yeah? This got developed. It's a mental development. Some people say it starts with the language center, but the language center plays a huge role in the self. Yeah, because when you listen to our language, English, it's a subjective language used by objects. We're constantly saying we're doing shit when we have nothing to do with. We are. It's constantly implying, like, you know, I shared it like yesterday. This one of, the, my, one of these knees went out surfing, but when I would tell people a story, I would say, I hurt my knee surfing. It sounded like I went out there with a hammer and fucking hit my knee, and I hurt my knee. I didn't hurt my knee. 
the knee went out and I became aware of it, basically. That's what happened. But this, the way the language puts it or frames it is you had a lot to do with a lot of shit you had nothing to do with. All day. Check it out. And we're passing it on. It's like we're living with a hypnotist, but we call it me, so you never kick it out. <laughs> the language is a trance setter. You're hearing all the thoughts in language, and it's a trance setter. It's constantly implying there's a you. Yeah. It's referring back to it, it's assuming, it's presupposing, how many ways you want to say it, but it's like tons of fingers, and then you make yourself the moon, basically. There's no moon, they're not pointing at anything, but then the mind, seeing it, finally succumbs and believes it, and now it seems to be so. Yeah. And then time starts, and the fucking whole thing goes off. There's nothing right or wrong with it. It's beautiful in a lot of ways. I mean, what would you see when you watch it, a bloom, a blossom open? Isn't that incredible? The slow takes months sometimes for an orchid to open up. It's like such a teasing out of beauty. I mean, time is like an incredible plucker of guitar <coughs> strings, yeah? You can hold a note and make it so more, it's so beautiful. Time, there's nothing wrong with the time. It's just when it becomes your time, and, yeah? Or the time, where you see it as something other than you that's imposing its will on you. Why do some days go fast and some days go slow? Is, does, time, does time have gears, personal gears? Oh, I'm gonna fuck with him today. <laughs> Usually when you're at work or something, and then when you're really enjoying something, you're speeding through it. It's all dreaming. It's mind dreaming, yeah? You're the base of the whole event. Just like when you said you had a really slow day today. Really slow day. But I didn't. <laughs> I was just using it as an example. I, I didn't have a day, really. Well, we just went to a park, no, you... and every I could feel the joy of English people. The sun was out. It was amazing. <laughs> I mean... I come from California, we take it for granted. I can see everyone, they were all laying and just so trying to soak up as much as they could. There was such a fucking sense of gratitude. Oh, I mean, I, I got caught up in the fever, it was wonderful. Back home, it's every day like this. better. Oh. <laughs> but really, it was a deep appreciation. And everyone was laying pointed to the sun. You know? <laughs> Thousands of them all over the city in one direction. <laughs> Don't you feel it? London's grateful today. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Were these the two best days in the year? So far, you see? I mean, how many? Someone told me there was 10 days of the year that are good, but there's more, right? 10, only 10? No, there's more. 100. 100? Three weeks, if we're lucky. Three weeks? 21 days out of 365? <laughs> I, maybe I have a new job. I'll import fucking sunlight from California and, and supply the English nation with it. I could do well, eh? Yeah. All right, send a big container of sunlight. You go, oh, we all have tans and everything. Oh. Well, any more questions? We can. Oh, she's all right. <laughs> yes. What would you have to say about the value of hallucinogens? Synergen? Oh, hallucinogens. Are you on a hallucinogen now? Oh. Oh. But, um, would you say they're the same as drugs? What, this right now? Hallucinogens. Hallucinogens are drugs. Yeah. Yeah, when I did them, the first maybe 13 trips were very educational, but then it became entertainment. And now people are doing it. You know, how many ceremonies can you have? 
with ayahuasca and shit and licking toads. You know? <laughs> what happened with ceremony this weekend? I wish we used to have that name when we were getting loaded. And the police would come over, hey, I'm in a ceremony. <laughs> I'm going to a ceremony. Religious <laughs> immunity. That's, that's right. It's a ceremony. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Ceremony. I don't know who. I like hallucinogens, yeah. I did. Didn't you, really? I thought they were quite eye opening. The plastic people and everything. <laughs> but really, it showed me the conditioning that I was enveloped in when I was young. Really, I thought it was quite helpful. Yeah. You can be high now. I can, I'm high all the time, basically, and I can't be pulled over for it, which is nice. And I don't have to kiss anyone's ass to get it, which is the really good part. Because I heard a lot of people's life stories when I was buying cocaine from them. They would never get turn over the drugs. You have to be there four hours. Yes, Arnie, I remember. Yes. <laughs> There was hell to pay. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the great freedoms, getting sober. It's not being dependent on other people for my condition. Yes? And then non-duality takes it so much farther. Because you are what you're looking for. Fucking hallelujah. Yeah, truly. You know, truly. True, true independence. Yeah. Losing the need to be liberated. Losing interest in things, losing interest in the pursuit of things, losing interest, and then just having a wealth of sense of presence, you know, and a contentment and satisfaction. I used to try to pay $500 for every fucking night. Really? So, yeah. I think that's, it. oh, one more, all right, one more, yes. Yeah, hi. Um, is it basically a sort of can't I didn't know where it was coming from. I thought it was coming from that guy. <laughs> he's throwing his voice there. Yes. Could you see it as sort of extending step one beyond alcohol or drugs or whatever to just deem the whole selfing? Oh for sure, yeah. As you just there's just this thing will do what it does regardless of what's going on up here, sort of yeah. and then as soon as you to realise that it's just doing its thing and you can kind of let go of the wheel and it still goes left and right and up and down or whatever. Yes. And then it and you're just sort of the observing, the, the, like you say, the awareness. Well, you're the space, that. really. Space I don't think you're an observing. Yeah. You're the space it's all appearing in. But that space is brilliantly on, you know. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I th uh, my humble idea is the real root of it is the I identification as a self. That I think that's the root of, of the disease mm. of alcoholism. Yeah, I don't believe it's obsession with self. I think the mental state in identification as self uses obsession with self to reinforce the identification. It has to because it's it's not, there's no point of bonding, yeah? You are not a body. So the glue has to be applied so much. That's why the head is constantly <clears throat> obsessed with self because it's trying to apply the bondage, the glue to make it seem like you're that. If you don't have thoughts about it all day, it would be obvious you're not that. The thought system to navigate a day doesn't need 70,000 thoughts a day. If I was a house painter, I needed maybe 15 thoughts. <laughs> really. I didn't need 69,800 something more. They're, they're doing a job, and that's reinforcing the idea of being a self. That's what they're up to, seriously. That's why the thought system, which is happening now, is never about now. It's about yesterday and tomorrow. Because yesterday and tomorrow, you're the big star. You can't picture spirit in the past, but you can picture you as a body in the past. You can't picture spirit in the future, but you can definitely picture you as a body in the future. And that's the mental, mental state's target, is you as a body. And in a sense, there's nothing we could have done at all that we... Because we're not the doer, there's nothing we could have done or sort of can do to guide the body in certain ways in the future. No, so but in a way, when you realize that, then a way of life of AA can be helpful because the principles of AA can guide the body. Yeah. Yeah, see, people can get sober, the problem is staying sober. Mm -hmm. 
So you can get to feel great on Sunday, you know, and at nine o'clock, all the, all the blocks will be aligned and you'll feel fantastic, but then there's 902 and new conditions arise and you can be fucked again, yeah? Most of us, most of this needs a way of life. Some of us like who have this tendency of driving off the road, AA is a great way of life. I haven't gone to jail 29 years. It's pretty awesome to me, yeah? I haven't had a thought or a feeling about using drugs. For that problem, which was so influential not to exist for me anymore, is a fucking huge miracle. To me, it's a demonstration of a power greater than self, yeah? I am that power, but it's a demonstration of that power. Because no human power in this life could get me sober, none. My mother, no one, the state, nothing. And yet I was struck sober. Something intervened and put an end to it. And it's just been playing out for 29 years. It's all that happened. So I am a true believer <clears throat> Yes, true believer that I'm not managerial quality. Surrender is surrendered now. I'm not in argument with, with the principles. They're like North Stars, they work for this body. And then all the while I can rest in what I am. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. See, I know a lot of people who want to replace AA with something and they're drunk Buddhists, or they're drunk non-dualities. Yes. It's not what, the problem is not an inherent one, it's the action figure. Yeah, and it needs to be dealt with at the action figure levels. Like an AA says, you know, you can't think yourself into right action, but you can write, you can act yourself into right action. Yes? Something like that. Actuate your right thinking. Yes. Actually, you know, so AA in the beginning of A is action. You're going to use the action figure, the dream is self out of the action figure life. You can't think yourself out of it. Yeah, you can't feel yourself out of it, but you can do yourself out of it. Yeah. And then down the road, then incredible uh, effects occur where you'll cease fighting anyone or anything. The problem won't exist for you anymore. You'll feel a new fire flowing in. Don't want, they're, they're not things you did. Those are effects. Something shifted, and this is what starts to happen, yeah? Yeah. So you're shifting out of a failed system to a workable system. You're leaving self-centeredness, and you're trusting something infinite. That's what happens. That's what happens in surrender. I know, I know I'm taking care of no matter what the physical, perceptual evidence is, because it has taken care of me 29 years, yeah? I don't wait for a... A, a stare to be guaranteed, I put my foot out and the stare appears. Yeah? My life doesn't start with a thought occurred to me. It's way beyond that. Yeah? That's what happens. So. Hey, that's it, I think, eh? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. I hope it's a really sunny day for England. <laughs> I do. I think you deserve it. You need some more sun. Did you notice today? There was a lot of clouds, but they never stopped the sun. It was pretty amazing. There was lots of them, but nothing blocked the sun. We ordered especially for you. What? It was ordered especially for you. <laughs> Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I don't know if mine is about AA, but just it mean you can never have a...